Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again on Let's Talk. This is Yu Sai, and I'm so excited for my guest today because my guests and I have known each other for over a decade. I'm not sure he even realized that. Together, we have worked on magazines and shooting celebrities such as Christina Ricci, Julia Lewis, and Joseph Gordon Lovett, to name a few, for various publications. But now he sits at the helm of the iconic interview magazine as editor in chief. So we're going to talk all about that today. Welcome, my guest today, Nick Hermes. Hey, Nick. Hey, you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining um, me. That makes me sound super fancy, and then I love how I'm looking in my ba- the back of this thing. I'm in uh, the northern Midwest right now with my boyfriend's parents. We've been here for four months. Uh, so, yeah, it, feel- <laughs> it feels kind of wild, but it's nice to see you. This is the new normal, and we're embracing all of it. And the reason I have this behind me so you don't see that big mess that would be beyond this wall. <laughs> I was going to, if I was only a little bit more technologically savvy, I was going to do, you know, you can like make a background. I was going to use the pictures that we had done together, uh, but I had no idea how to do it. So, Well, so, let's so. jump right into to our talk today. And, and I'm so excited to have you here because literally a decade, our relationship spans over a decade. And I love for people to kind of go down the memory lane with us a little bit. And then from there, we'll talk about what's happening right now at Interview Magazine, which I think is super exciting. And thank you for giving me a preview of the magazine this month and also the September issue that's coming out. So maybe you can give us a little bit of sneak peek into that. So 10 years ago, where were you at that time? Do you remember? Well, I was actually doing a little bit of... uh traipsing down memory lane and I can't remember if the first shoot that we did together we, I, I was edited I was an editor at Black Book um and that's where we first worked together uh but I couldn't remember if it was Christina Ricci who was the first shoot that we worked on together because I went back and there was also Kesha and Elle Fanning as well um, and Romy and yeah, yeah yeah totally um and so I couldn't figure out which, I think, I, for me, I think the one that was the most memorable was, was Ricci. We were doing the cover shoot, and I remember we were shooting at that, um, that hotel in Santa Monica. Is that right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, it was uh, one of the most memorable shoots just because she was such an iconic talent. And I, I do believe that was our very first, because I actually asked my producer to go back and look at the call sheet the first time we actually worked together. And, and back then, that editors do come on set, and, and the directors, creative director, are very hands-on doing the shoot. And you were, someone was incredibly hands-on. There are shoots that I, as a photographer, show up that just kind of get to play. But you were really hands-on. You had a vision what you wanted to shoot at this hotel. And in your head, I remember this so well, is that, you had this perfect vision of how, where she's going to stand, what she's going to look like. And I remember by then I was shooting a lot of celebrities. I kind of just sit back and go, you go tell her. <laughs> yes. Well, and we wanted, we wanted to bleach her eyebrows too, remember? Uh, and that did not, if Christina's watching right now, she'll be so mad at me. But yeah, she did, she did not want to bleach the eyebrows. I remember that. Um, there was a lot of discussion on that set, whether or not she will have bleach eyebrows or not and whether or not that she was going to stand on the edge of the balcony and it was not because it was so problematic that that wasn't the case it's just that in some shoots you have to be very collaborative with your talent and she's so branded she knew who she wanted to be and how she wanted to be captured and and for me i don't think i ever shared with you the biggest challenge on that shoot for me to shooting christina it was that i wanted to make her feel so majestic and tall and for those who have ever met her, she's a tiny little girl <laughs> at yeah, that time. Yeah. She's a woman now, but at the time, 10 years ago, when she showed up, and she was just, I'm like, whoa, okay, I got to probably like dig a tunnel and high on the ground and shoot up to make her tall and majestic. So that was my personal goal, to make sure that I can capture that. Another thing was that I remember our conference call before the shoot, and you said, nobody ever see her sexy because her roles have always been very characteristic kind of roles, right? And you're like, push her to be sexy. Push her to be sexy. So that was, that was two tasks I had. Make her a giant and make her super sexy. Well, she looked great. I thought those pictures were so, were so wonderful. And that, that was our first beginning of our, our, our long-term relationship. And, and because, because the type of work that we do, and we talked about this before, we show up and shoot as a photographer and editors go back and most of the work is done then that you guys start editing and start pacing story together. And next time we get a call from you, it's not, hey, that story turned out great. Usually it's, okay, we moved on. 
we're going to do a next shoot. Are you available? Yeah. So I want you here truly because I want to give this moment a pause to say thank you so much for for supporting my work in such an early stage of my career. I was shooting probably by my fourth year, and and when you found my work and and embraced it, and it wasn't just a one off. We did have an amazing collaborative journey together with so many different stories we shot, and I'm so proud to have that relationship, especially in fashion, as you know. You know, as Heidi Klum would say, a moment you're in, and next moment you're out. Well, she would say it with a German accent. Okay, so. um, <laughs> I'll <would> say <laughs> in Chinese accent. <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you for that because this and 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 be able to watch you as well going from magazine to magazines and taking what you love and passion and your DNA from one magazine to the other and and still carrying me along. I, I just want to say thank you. And I appreciate that. No, I mean, thank you. Some of those shoots are some of the more memorable of my career. So thank you. I feel like the one that I always think about, because the, the Christina was our, for, was our first meeting. Um, and then we, we shot Joe Gordon-Levitt together. And that was really fun. But the one that sticks out to me was after I left Black Book, Book and went to Bullet Magazine, uh, we did, it was the first cover that, I think I was, I was brought on as editorial director and I think that was my first cover that I worked on. Mm. And the idea was that we were going to have two covers and they were going to be in dialogue with one another very literally. Um, so we shot Daniel Radcliffe, Mariana Bavanko shot Daniel Radcliffe and he shot him as sort of like a 50s pinup. And then we had Juliette Lewis, whom you shot, play Daniel Radcliffe's sort of like homicidal super fan. <laughs> so it was sort of like crazy super fan. And, uh, and we made, out of the pictures that Mariano had taken, we, you know, put them on um, the icing on a cake or like imprinted the, the pictures from the shoot onto underwear. Um, the art director, uh, James Orlando, had sort of made a collage in the lockers of all the pictures. It was, it was like a super intense thing and kind of a crazy character that we wanted Juliet to play. Uh, and she was super game for it. It was uh, a room you, that was like you walked into a a college freshman's dorm room that was obsessed with this teen teenage pop star, and it much like the room you're in now, but every single corner was plastered with with his and Daniel Radcliffe's pictures and signatures. It was phenomenal. I love that room. That would make an amazing set right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I absolutely did. And, and as a photographer, to show up to a room like that, because it took a couple of days to build, and, and people didn't realize we were shooting at the editor-in-chief's house. We took over yeah. his house and plastered it, designed it. And for me, I wasn't in New York, so I came in on that day of the shoot when I walked in and saw the <laughs> set. It was just, I was like, wow, now, now this is creativity. Now we get to play. Because... You know, when you shoot for a publication for a Condé Nast, for example, a Harper's Bazaar for a Hearst, there's a there's kind of a parameter that you kind of have to shoot within. Those are the dialogues that you can't have. You don't vary from them. And for you to bring in that fantasy world to me and allow me to play that day, oh, it was not work. It was so well, much fun. I feel like I can't take total credit for that because that team that uh, when I first started on that team, it was um, Adil Tabanka, whose house we were shooting at, was the editor-in-chief. And uh, thankfully, she had a two-story place. So we didn't have to, like, clear out that entire set uh, or her house for the set. Um, but those guys were all super young. And, uh, and, like, I was pretty young at the time, too. But I was sort of brought on as, like, the guy who knew maybe, like, a little bit more about what I was doing, but not really. Um, Anyway, those that was those were really fun. I was there for a few years, and those were really fun years because nobody really knew what they were doing. And so, if you don't know the rules, you're much more likely to be happy about breaking them. I think. Uh, and so, we did a lot of really weird stuff there. But yeah, that was my first cover. Well, one thing that you know, as a photographer, as a as an editor in chief, now you know that when there's certain typical moment that happen, when all the star happen to align, the picture speaks thousands of words and they become timeless and i feel like that shoot was that because you know we we always try to to break what we do every day and then when we get the opportunity to be creative we try but if the team is not aligned with you you then can't get there this is one of those pivotal moments that when you saw the first frame frame on the monitor you you just jump back and go holy crap we're onto something cool and 
not only that was a concept great, we had a talent that embraced it. Julia Lewis embraced it, and that was so important. And and I remember that day well because she got herself encapsulated into this cocoon of a character, and she lived in that world the entire time. And even during lunch, she did not break character. She was constantly lost. I remember she would go like this. Where am I? And I'll be, like, I'll be like, you're in the locker room now, and you're surrounded by Daniel Radcliffe. And she'd be like, oh. and she would stop posing in that mode. It was like watching theater happen, and she was so theatrical. And I, I absolutely loved every moment of that. I feel so like I must have been distracted uh, with the details that day or something. Because I don't remember her being like method like that, but that's so, <laughs> that, I mean, that sounds like her, and that's really cool. Oh no, I remember we did the cake thing and she just like, before I remember this, cause she was so in character, she wouldn't stop and break character for me to direct her. So I'll be like, give her the cake, hurry. Camera had to be ready when you guys give her the cake. Cause I don't know what she's gonna do with that. I don't know, she's gonna smash it, she's gonna eat it, she's gonna put on her face. So, so for you guys haven't seen the story, please do Google that story. It's so beautiful. And when you see those images, you'll see how serendipitous every single frame seemed cause they were truly capture of a moment of her performance and she dug the hand into the cake it was awesome it was yeah, just yeah, awesome yeah. yeah it was an awesome day <laughs> well we hope as in our career we get to continue to do that with different yes. magazines a different project we shoot and you have done many of that since you've been an interview tell me a little bit about how this position came about and what was your mission taking on this task yeah um I, so I left Bullet and I went to, um, to the Times. I, I went to be an editor at T, the style magazine of the Times. And I was there for maybe four years. And that was incredible. That was- I like, love that magazine, by the way. A highlight I, of my life. Um, we didn't get to collaborate during that time, but I love what you were doing during that time. I, I, I think yeah. T's, and, and now T has become internationally syndicated with different languages as well, the DNA of it still stay true to what you have put into for four years. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so I, I, I worked there and then um, I was asked to come over to interview. Um, and it was a really interesting, I mean, interview had forever been my magazine. Uh, you know, like I, I loved it. I grew up in a small town in Canada and uh, as like a gay kid who was closeted, who uh, wanted to like be in the big city, that was the magazine that I read. Um, and, you know, flipping from page to page, it was like, here's a movie star, and then here's a club kid, and here's, like, a rock star who's maybe past their prime, and here's a musician you've never heard of, and I feel like all of that sort of cacophony of personality that was thrown in a blender really spoke to me, um, but I also loved my job at the Times, and leaving the Times felt like, you know, my mom was like, are you crazy? Um, and so, yeah, they, they ended up offering me the job at interview, and I took it, and, uh, um, it has been so wonderful. I think when I inherited the magazine, it was a really sort of capital F fashion magazine. Mm -hmm. um, it was, <laughs> it was real. I mean, it was like one of the one of the best fashion magazines in the world. And um, and to me, while it did that so incredibly well, that wasn't the version of the magazine that I had originally fallen in love with. I had fallen in love with, and you and I have spoken about this. The sort of like. I mean, obviously the Warhol era, the earliest era of the magazine through the sort of Richard Bernstein colorful pop era. But I loved the 90s era with Ingrid Sishi as the editor in chief. Um, and uh, in large part, I mean, it was because of her, it was because of what she did with the magazine. And uh, she wasn't afraid to seem sort of silly. There were puns everywhere. There was an issue that I found recently with Kathy Bates on the cover. And it was like the corn issue, like it was it was about <laughs> corn, um, and every single name was a pun on the cover. The logo was rendered in corn stalks. It was like they were ha obviously having fun. It was it was wild, and it was not always like the biggest success, but they were playing. Uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to sort of bring it back to that era when uh, it felt a little messier, and it felt more immediate and personal and it really showed rather than um saying this is the concept and these are the clothes and we want to put them on somebody i wanted to sort of really let the personality of the people shine um and so yeah that's what that's what i wanted to do i wanted to bring a little bit of fun messy life to it back to it well 
I, I think it's important for us to talk a little bit about that period in the 90s where Ingrid really took on that magazine. And like you said, that it's so joyful and celebrated in bright colors. And and photographer like Alan Moore was shooting about 90%, I would say 99% of the covers at that time. That was kind of, whether it's contracted or not, but she really gave that definition what that magazine was about. It was like the new Rolling Stone, right? It was the new way to talk about celebrity. And they didn't have to be a-list celebrity to be on the cover. They just have something that, that, that Ingrid felt that was intriguing. And she took chances on not only the talent she put on the cover, she took chances on young writers and, and young photographers. And that was my very first legitimate editorial. That and when I got a call from my agent saying they want to shoot, you just shoot a story on. Oh, I always forget the actor's name. is awful. Uh, Deadpool. Joseph. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. I don't. I don't know why I can't. I look. I look. I know his you told me that you shot that. I looked the pictures up. Um, they're great. They're like they remind me sort of not that they're derivative of anything, but they remind me of um, like a sort of earlier Matthew Rolston type, oh, like Hollywood. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're they're so great. I was still a student, you know, that that was like so new to me. It was, I was just I was like, okay, um, sure. I remember not even know how to book studios and I walk into Smashbox at the time and they go, hey, you saw it. I go, how do you know me? He goes, oh, it's on the board that you're going to be here next week. I'm like, how do you guys know that? Like everything was lined up already by production. So yeah. I, did, I just had to show up and not be nervous and photograph him. And I think that day he felt I was nervous because this is such a young, I mean, I was, it was my, one of my very first celebrity shoes. And and he was so professional that I, I didn't get to engage. And from that shoot, I actually realized that was so important that I need to engage right away with the people I'm shooting and 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 to be able to capture something. Because I do look back at those pictures. Technically, you're absolutely right. It's very 90s. It feels like it fits in a magazine. But I didn't get that personality of, from the talent like I do now or even... Right time that we shot together with with, with Christina Ricci and you want to know what I think a secret to your success has been um is that I've never seen anyone do this before oh and I, I haven't told you this and I don't know if it's, it'll sound like a neg because it is not a neg it's only a compliment um most photographers when I when they go on set are either like I'm here for work you're the canvas and like that's it or I'm here to like become your friend, like like come into my world and and let's play together. And you're the th no, you're the third version, which is like sort of negging the celebrity a little bit, like kind of making fun of the idea of celebrity. And in doing so, you kind of break down the hierarchy. I think on set, it really takes the air out of the tires right away in a way that. Um, is, re is refreshing because immediately there's no sort of question about who's in charge. It's, it's your shoot, um, but everyone's on the same page. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I noticed that at every shoot that we've been on together. Well, thank you for recognizing that. And it's true because I couldn't get the confidence to get, get to their level. So I just bring them down to my dirty ground level, you know? And, <laughs> and, and I don't really remember when we shot Joseph Gordon Love It. Yeah. I keep calling him Jennifer Love Hewitt through the entire shoe. No, that's a mistake. <laughs> they were both, they're both pretty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and, and remember we had the behind the scene video and it wasn't until I watched the behind the scene video, I go, oh my God, he put up with my stupidity the entire day. Because I didn't let go of that joke and I, he was so, it, I thought he, he could have walked off saying, oh, this guy's an idiot. What the hell is he doing here? But he was very gracious. He watched every frame and he actually enjoyed the process of images we were capturing. Yeah. He, he went for it. And one of the most amazing compliments is when, when the subject you take generally said the truth what they love. And he was one of those who said, you know what, you're a good storyteller. It's, it, that's what, and instead of saying you're a great photographer, he actually said you're a great storyteller. And that is the best compliment we can have in our industry is to tell stories and people mm -hmm. wanted to, to, to watch or, or, or read, right? So when you went to interview, yeah. and it's, the interview has gone through different iterations of time. Like you say, it's a big capital F magazine. It's in a way very classism. And this elite of all elite on top. When you come in, did people embrace this notion that you wanted to bring back a bit of the classic of the 90s, uh, bring back the inclusivity of, of talents that would be featured as well as people behind the camera? Yeah, um, I think more than, I, I don't want to suggest that I sort of like reinvented anything. I think in the way that Ingrid um, dispel, di dispel, that's not the word that I mean, in, in, in the way that her personality was sort of 
you could see it in every page of the magazine. There's a sensibility more than anything that I really wanted mm -hmm. to come through when I took over, um, which is much like an extension of my own personality, which is not to take yourself too seriously, to take the work very seriously, but to not uh, take yourself too seriously. Um, and, uh, you know, we just did an anniversary book. We just celebrated 50 years of the magazine with Asuline, and we did this huge coffee table book. But in making it, we went through the archives, and it's been really interesting to see how every decade there was sort of a tonal shift in the magazine. Um, you know, it started out as a film journal by Warhol, and the, the, the legend is that he just wanted to get into film screenings. So in order to do that, he made a film journal so he could have an excuse to be invited to premieres. Um, and then it became, then it was a society magazine for a while, and it was a music heavy magazine for a while, and Ingrid was very like Hollywood, mm -hmm. and then it became a fashion magazine. And for me, um, I guess this is a really sort of circuitous way of answering your question, but I think um, my goal was always to yoke together all the best parts of those eras, um, rather than take it in an entirely new direction. And so, uh, it was more about throwing it in a blender. And I think, and, and, and people have really seemed to respond well to that. So that's, that's and, been nice. And the curiosity from, from a reader like me, because I remember that pivotal moment that you were going in, you're going to be the guy who's going to shake it up a little bit. Was it because the magazine at the time was so highbrow that you needed to reach out to more of a different audience to build more awareness? Um, I think, well, I think people, yeah, I mean, I, I think people, a part of that answer is that people have their way of doing things and do the things that they do really well. Um, and so sometimes change is, is not the most sort of appealing thing. Um, so of course, when I came on and there were things that I wanted to do, to do differently, there were moments where there, there was sort of pushback from that. Um, but I think, the current team that we have, uh, Mel Ottenberg is my creative director and Richard Turley is our editorial director. Um, and we have a really great team of people and we're all sort of very much on the same page. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, I think the magazine's always been, like I said, you sort of like throw all of these random disparate people into a blender. Um, and that could include um, a politician with a club kid, with a fashion designer. And I think Warhol's thing was always, what is the best possible dinner party you could host? Let's make that a magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me and, and for the team and for our team, I think that that's really the thing that we um, we do and, and want to do. It's like, um, it, it's, it's, I think it also mimicked not just on the page, but also in the, in the people who put what's on the page. Um, we have emerging photographers shooting, our cover um, when we have Steven Klein and Jurgen Teller, you know, shooting stuff inside. And I think, and, and vice versa. And I think it's really sort of about having all kinds of sort of new established high, low, um, and I, all kinds of different voices. I think that that's always been sort of the DNA of the magazine, and especially now. Well, especially now, I was going to say it was not always consistent throughout. And as somebody who is diverse in a skin tone, as somebody who didn't come from a high fashion training uh, growing up as a photographer, I love seeing magazine like interview where you have taken it because we, we celebrate the underdogs. You know, we, that, that magazine has always been like that for me. When you can look at it and say, I'm inspired and inspired to be in this magazine and it is possible. And for mm -hmm. a period of time, I felt like it was impossible for so many who tried to be part of that dialogue and i think what you have done and a crazy courageous thing that you have done is bring that that vulnerability in a way to the magazine all over again and and, and not afraid to make mistake i think for a while there it was so perfect it was the fashion bible and there was no mistake to be found now you're exploring all over again and the new attitude especially the new climate that we have right now that though you will wait ahead of your time so appreciate and thank you for that Thanks. I will. The only thing that I can cop to among those compliments is that I do think um, our strength right now is our sloppiness. Like it's uh, it's kind of all over the place. And um, the issue that I sent you was our spring issue that came out. We closed that issue the day before New York went into lockdown. Um, we weren't able. It's sort of like being on a set and then not seeing the photographer again. Like we closed the issue. 
Um, and then everybody kind of scattered or stayed in New York um, and we haven't seen each other in person to sort of say that was a great issue, but it was a really, it was a great issue. And I think, you know, inside it was like, Selena Gomez was on the cover in a pretty provocative shoot by Eli Russell Linnitz and, and Mel Ottenberg styled it. Um, but then inside it was like Madeleine Albright, the former secretary of state and uh, Issa Rae. And I don't, I don't even remember who's in it, but it was, it was a whole mix of people that you'd be like, oh, sick. If we were all in the same room together having a drink, this would be kind of fun. Um, and I hope that that's the feeling that we evoke in, in every issue. Absolutely. I think the audience are beginning to see that. And I'm so glad that we talked this offline that you had to remind me that it is a print issue now. It's not just staying digital because there was a moment that we were unsure what's going on. Yeah. So share a little bit about where the DNA is going to be and what's your mission moving forward now. And you just finished September issue. So maybe give us a little sneak peek. Yeah. Um, we have... Uh, I feel like it took, so we relaunched in September of 2019, 2018, what's the, what year is it? Yeah, I think 20, 2018, yeah. Um, and uh, my sort of calling card, what I, what I, or, or the thing that, my calling card, nobody, nobody knows what I do. Um, but the thing that I always really pride myself on is that our September issues are always kind of like a surprise cover. Um, in large part, that's that's not just an accident. I think in large part, um, the industry has made the September issue this like mythical thing. And in order to be on a September issue, you have to be famous enough or, or you have to have the right look or you have to have the, enough clout. Um, and my thing was always like, oh, let's really put our, I have put our money where I'm at, this is not the right word, but like really, um, go there when it comes to the September issue and put people that we love who otherwise wouldn't necessarily be on the cover of the September issue. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have Kate Blanchett on a cover and we can have, you know, A-list actors on a cover, but on September, I've really always tried to make it unexpected. And so the first one we did since the relaunch, well, we, we put, the first one I did at interview was with Northwest on the cover. Um, it was her first cover. <laughs> I think she was like four. Um, and Kim was on it with her. Uh, and that didn't age, that hasn't aged <laughs> totally well. Um, she was dressed as- But it was uh, pivotal at that time. It was pivotal she was, at She that was time. dressed as like a, in, in homage to a first lady. Um, and we said, uh, the headline was America's new first lady. Uh, and we were, we were meaning to be provocative. Trump had just come into office not too, not too much so earlier. Uh, and we thought, if he can be in the office, why couldn't why couldn't the first lady of reality TV be the first lady of America? Um, and it was meant to be a joke. And then anyway, that totally hasn't necessarily aged that well. But that was the first one, uh, and Stephen Klein shot that, and it was it was it was a, a memorable shoot. No matter no matter what the takeaway is, and she was lovely. Um, and then the next one was Agnes Varda for the relaunch issue, um, who is recently died sadly, but she was in her nineties. Um, and an iconic uh, filmmaker. And we wanted to put her on the cover because she was on the first ever cover that Andy Warhol did in 1969. Uh, and so we brought her back almost 50 years later to be on the cover again. Um, and that was so dope. I remember we wanted um, people to talk about her, like famous people to talk about her. And uh, that's not always easy to get people to do. It's like, if it's not about them, it's sort of like my schedule is busy. Um, but she, I remember her, her daughter um, was, was, was the person who dealt with all of her affairs. And when we were asking for who she would like to speak on her behalf, she was like Angelina Jolie, Kate Blanchett, like all of these really, really famous people. And we were like, okay, like, I don't know. I don't know if that will happen. And then the daughter gave us all of the personal email accounts of all of the most famous people in the world. And we're like, they'll do it. And they did. Um, and so that was the second September issue. And then uh, the most recent one was RuPaul. And that was, um, we had it planned before the Vogue uh, cover that Kim Kardashian did uh, came out that coincided with the Met Ball Camp Gala. Um, but we knew that that was coming up. And Ru is a fashion icon for, you know, whatever you think about every every other aspect of Ru. She is a, she is a pioneer and really like at the intersection of so many things that we're talking about today. Um, 
And so we put her on the cover. And I think that that worked out really well because Vogue put Kim on the cover for the camp issue and put her inside or ruin him inside for like a two page feature. Um, so anyway, that was, that was really fun. And we had Ethan James green shoot that. And, uh, and I love that cover so much too. This one is, um, is, is, uh, is a very, is a very famous <laughs> musician. Uh, you'll see. Um, well, I, what I love, what I love is seeing you, your face and reaction as you're talking about these covers and the changes you have made. And there's definitely a, a beautiful joy that comes through because, and truly in fashion that we know every photo shoot sometimes can become a grind. Every concept you come up with and that you want to execute, often in time it comes with such a trying process that you don't get to love and enjoy the end result. By hearing you just talking about these last four, four different covers, different talents on the cover and, and the new cover to come. I see that glimpse of smile and the joy that comes with it. And and I, I know people are watching, some people are fashion people, some people are not. And and truly a lot of times in fashion, I get effed up from it. Like I get screwed up in a head fling. You know, we get very angry through that process. And at the end of the day, sometimes we don't get to celebrate those moments or say thank you to the people that that carry through that process. And and I love the fact that I can smile with you and excited about the next cover that's coming. Yeah, I think people, I think some people will hate it and some people will love it. <laughs> um, it's always, I think like the testament to our success or like the barometer of whether or not we've succeeded is when we get together the team that made the magazine and often there will be a moment where we're like, this is so fucked up. I can't <laughs> believe we're doing this. And that usually is is a sign that it will that we've done right. I think. Um, and do you feel like just within the last two years, because social media presence is so ever important, and making noises on TikTok is just part of the DNA now for everybody's world. Do you feel the magazine will continue to evolve and change with time, especially during this time that you get to really evaluate and see how to pivot? Do you see that that's the next iteration? Yeah, I mean, I think. Um, I don't know if this is totally answering answering your question, but like Warhol as the founder of this thing was so obsessed with the idea of celebrity um, and superstars um, and fame and the fleetingness of fame. And so I think we are in a really good position to be able to sort of be in conversation with that kind of fame. So yeah, I mean like TikTok in the September issue, we have a big story that's adjacent to TikTok. Um, and I think somebody, when we first relaunched, a friend of mine messaged me and was like, you are simultaneously deifying celebrities. Like you're simultaneously holding them on a pedestal, but also taking the piss out of them uh, and the idea of celebrity. And I think that that is true. Um, we love fame and celebrities and, 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 and art and culture and all of those things, but we're also able to see that simultaneously there are so many silly byproducts of that. Um, so yeah, I mean we're 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 always trying to say like what is what magazine reflects the moment right now. Um and and right now the issue that we're I should not be talking to you right now. We're closing September today. Um and the issue that we made over the past few months has been an isolation as the pandemic sort of ebbs and flows in various parts of the country. Um and nobody kind of knows what they're doing. Um, it's been a time of hope and tumult and chaos. And, uh, and I think that this issue reflects that in a really, in a really nice way. It's funny because you kind of are like, is what I'm doing important? Like, does, does any of, does making a magazine right now matter at all? And in some ways the answer is no, but in other ways it is yes. Like I, I do think creating something that is a time capsule of this moment is, is is important um anyway I, I hope people like it we're we're gonna finish it when i get off the phone with you <laughs> well thank you for making the time i know so those of you guys out there i hounded nick for weeks and weeks and i said i have to have you on this week because the schedule was so packed with different artists at different schedules and 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 he <laughs> last week you're like um i'm closing september i go i don't care <laughs> it's the, it's it is the canadian in me that i was like my boyfriend was like, you can't do it. You're closing your biggest issue of the year. You're re doing it remotely in a global pandemic. And I was like, yeah, but he rescheduled a few things. So I really have to. Um, but yeah. 
Well, I'm grateful and thankful for giving us this time as editor in chief. That I respect the work that you have done, and I was so grateful that you have. You know, we have celebrated so many amazing moments together, and we talked about this offline. During this time, is rare that we can actually make time to tell each other that thank you, and that goes a long way. And the kindness that you have given me throughout these years are are it's it's. I'll be honest, it's hard to find. In our industry, at times, at times, because we get so bombarded with the stress level, of trying to create something that is groundbreaking. So you're the only one that have that we forget to realize that the people surround us and the journey that we travel together, we get to revisit again, like a time castle we are doing yeah. now. And I appreciate that so much because because of you, I get to revisit the last ten years of work that we have done together. And 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 I did the same thing you did. I laughed at them. I go, oh my god, I remember that moment. But remember this moment we can. And and, I, and and yes, how the hell did we get Julia to do what she did? And those are the things as a nice reminder that what we do should come with joy. And thank yes. you so much. I'm so joyful that you're here with me today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's been so nice. Well, I can't wait for the September issue. And guys. Make sure you check out interview.com, right? That yeah. is the website address. Yeah, interviewmagazine.com. Yeah. Interviewmagazine.com. And this is the editor in chief. And what a pleasure having this time with you. And I hope soon in the future that we get to collaborate again. Yes, and in the meantime, thank you for celebrating artists, diversity, people in front of the camera as well behind the camera. That is so ever important right now. Continue that conversation. I'll Thanks see you soon. You. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. 10 years. We got to work together for 10 years. And what an honor to have him with me today because this is the day that Interview Magazine closing the September issue, the cover is September issue, and I can't wait to get my hand on it. And and I, I love going down memory lane with somebody I know for so long and see each other's career have developed and, and change and evolve and and so important and responsibility that we have in the world of media, of fashion media or writing media or any kind of media that we are here on the IG media, that we continue the conversation about what's really important to, to to you and whether that's activism whether that it's about black Lives matter whether that's about inclusion and intersections all of it and i hope you guys enjoyed this week and the conversation we've been having i will be back again next week and we will always try our very best i will always do my very best to inspire and inspire other people out there with the guests that we have if you have any requests of anyone you think we should be talking to i should be talking to on let's talk DM me. Until we see each other again next week, have a safe weekend, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Have a good day.